welcome everyone it's Chris Petrie thanks so much again for coming by for another fantastic uh, video here I'm so glad to be here so glad to be uh, on YouTube and thanks so much for coming by and watching and painting along with us all here um, we're just gonna be creating a, a really fun uh, cafe scene here with some figures at a table um, with some really interesting uh, colors uh, just lots of fun um, we did some changes within the painting as we went so you can kind of see how um, when I work I usually if I have some things I like to change I just do them as I go so I talk about that as we go through the video so that'll be kind of like a fun thing we can do you'll see me change a, a few things as I go and this is the finished painting if you want you can work from this or you can um, uh, also at the uh, end of the video you'll see the finished painting as well there I added just a few things here to change um, uh, a few things. I added a little more leaves to the trees on the sides here. Uh, I did a little more additions to the face on this figure here in the blue. And uh, other than that though, I think it's pretty much pretty much the same way we left off at the end of the video when we were finally complete with the painting. So I hope you'll have fun with this. Um, again, add to it, subtract to it, change it around. Maybe this is a fun time to kind of practice different changes as you go uh, in a painting if you want to maybe make it more exciting or make a diversion within your painting to make certain sections a little more exciting so that it takes away from other parts of the painting that maybe you thought you might have had an issue with. So this is a real fun painting overall. Um, lots to learn here and um, again thanks so much for coming by and we'll start the video in just a second. Okay, let's get back started again now. We did just see the finished painting, and I think you'll agree with me. Uh, welcome, everybody. I think you're going to uh, back here. We're just uh, getting started up again. We saw the finished painting just a second ago. So I think everyone will agree with me here that um, this is a very uh, doable painting. It's a really nice cafe-type scene, and uh, we're just going to really take our time. The thing that is uh, really here, the most important thing is really to get started correctly. We just need to do a couple hash marks around the outside of our paper, which is, you know, we have this taped off, and this is approximately a 7 inch by 7 inch square uh, paper that we're using. This is a Fabriano uh, a rough paper. It's extra white rough, Artistico Fabriano paper. Um, and um, I started just doing a couple little pencil lines here and there and some sketch marks and hash marks around the... I always tape, tape around the, the uh, perimeter of my uh, my uh, watercolor paper before I start so this way I can make notes on it and um, start building from there so if we get some hash marks sometimes you don't need a lot of hash marks maybe only two or three maybe around your border but sometimes if you have more of a scene like this where there's a few more uh, you know lines and details that you're going to want to pick up throughout this um, subject matter this a nice little quaint uh, cafe here and we'll put some figures in here too so we're going to make it even more exciting we're going to add in some figures um, so what I'm thinking is let me uh, let us get some of those hash marks so that we just kind of can get the spacing between like the floor area or the ground level and then maybe the awning and then maybe the top of the awning and then above that is okay and then we're gonna make our own little cafe sign there was a name of a cafe here I just wanted to cross that out and put up my own little scribble here cafe and we'll do a little just cafe we'll put cafe you know on there up top for a little uh, extra interesting uh, uh, signage on top of our area here that we have and we'll add in a figure or, or two maybe we'll put two figures here having some lunch or coffee and um, and I think they're, it's pretty pretty straightforward so you'll see how I'm gonna do this and work along with me here maybe you want to watch the video full through one time and then go back and then just uh, stop and you know pause and go and pause and go on your video as we go so you can kind of work uh, at your own leisure and your own pace so basically the first thing I notice here is you know there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, horizontal lines here that run through this so that's sort of the predominant lines going through the the scene horizontal lines and then there's some verticals too we can minimize some of those verticals if we want 
and then just keep it mostly horizontal lines which will kind of look pleasing pleasant just mostly horizontal lines going across our scene and of course we'll need to get some vertical lines here so we have a couple verticals here the doorway the window um, maybe we can kind of blend these out into the background over here so that we're not seeing uh, too many verticals let's keep it more horizontal but I think we'll have a fun time with this and this is not extremely uh, time consuming this type of a painting we can do in like 45 minutes to an hour if we take our time if you wanted to rush through this and do it more quicker that's fine too some people like to work faster um, and uh, do things qu more quickly and get more of an abstract kind of painting look you know look um, but uh, this will be fun we'll minimize some details we're not going to get every single detail in this of course we try to minimize details sometimes when we're doing our watercolors and if you've been following me for a while you kind of know I like to sort of minimize details I'm not trying to get every single detail like the glasses and you know cutlery on the tables or you know maybe I'm not gonna maybe do every single thing I see here I'm you know gonna try to just get the basics you know of, of the scene and you can always add in details that's the thing you know or at least you can add in some more details when you're kind of finishing up your painting so let's get started here um, so I'm just looking at this and saying all right well this is about a third of the way down from the top is the bottom of the canopy so I take my paper and I say about a third of the way down maybe I'll go even further and I'll say a little bit past a third is my canopy so I'll make a mark over here on my paper canopy and I'll make a little a little wavy line there to, just to know that that's the line I'm talking about the canopy where the those uh, those uh, curved, curved lines on the border of the canopy are so that's the, actually the very very bottom of the canopy so I make sure I kind of note that over here in my tape over here on the side and then over here the top of the canopy so we just go up about you know um, not quite halfway we're gonna make this painting a little taller more more headroom up here so I'm, I'm adjusting this a little bit you can kind of see but this will be the top of the canopy here so we'll have that there and then uh, what else did we have here and then we said here was going to be the uh, bottom of the door the uh, door saddle so this is the bottom of the door saddle here and that's about a little past a third up from this line here so if we kind of start to like look at things as divisions of space so you're working on your your divisions of space and we said well our canopy is about a third of the way down from the top that's good there and then now the bottom of the door uh, door doorway here is about a third of the way up so that's about good so we make a line there a third of the way and then we're starting to really get uh, some good lines down here some good horizontal waypoints and then we can also say all right well now that we have our bottom of our door here we can also do that little small uh, step up area which is about here so we make a line across there that's where the step up area is it's like a small curb this is the bottom of the curb so there's a step up here onto like a kind of like a curb or a step and then up onto a sidewalk kind of feel and then that flows right into the space so that looks good there and then from there we just had a little angular line here where we see this over here and we put our planter here so we just have a square planter with a little bit of a flare out on an angle and a little bit of a rim on the top there so we and then we have another here so let's do that so you can kind of see I'm not getting too fancy you know we got one of these planters here it's a wood box planter and uh, we'll put the tree in in a little while let's kind of keep working on our lines here so this goes across here so this again is the wall where the door is the doorway so now we're looking good you can put in this small um, bit of um, dark looks like a mat maybe like a um, doormat type of thing here in front of the doorway 
you can put that in if you want. You don't have to. We can leave it more freer looking, but, but that's fine. And uh, we have a shadow here, so there's some shadowing happening. The shadow's about halfway on the doorway, and it goes this way, and then it sort of trails off this way. And so let's keep working this. We said this is the canopy, so this is a good time to maybe we can get our canopy started over here. So I'm just going to contour draw basically. I'm just going to go across here. And that looks a little bit like it's tipping. So if you find you need to use a ruler, maybe I'll use a ruler here just to keep this a little more straight here. So let me take my ruler. Maybe I'll use uh, my half ruler here. And I'll just use my half ruler here and uh, get a straighter line across here. And then we'll go about almost all the way to the edge, but not quite there. And then we'll put a little another small line here just to kind of give us that little it looks like a bar there's some sort of bar here on this canopy so that must be where the um, support is for the canopy itself that gets rolled up and um, moved up in the air to retractable this is a retractable uh, awning here so this canopy and awning is a retractable one that kind of rolls up into the top of this section up here so we're just taking some notes in our mind mental notes here and that's about where that starts there. And then there's the the um, and again you don't have to do as much detail. You can leave it like that and not do every line. But we said we're we're really enjoying the horizontal lines, all the horizontal lines running across this scene, like this. So we will put in that detail. Let's put in that. There's an you know an awning here, and we're going to notice there's another trim. There's like a trim up here, like a nice dark trim. And this one, since we have this line with the ruler, we can just draw this one in because we already have a straight line to reference our straight line here. But if you feel comfortable, use the ruler. Take the ruler, just make your second line up here if you need to. That's fine. If you can freehand it, that's good too. It's up to you. And we have that, and then we'll do another line like this, just to let us know we're going to paint that in a little thicker with a dark, dark line there when we paint. And up here, we're going to we're going to do a cafe sign, so maybe we'll make the cafe sign the middle third. So if we break down our our space up here into thirds, we might say this is a third. This is a third, and this is a third. This is the middle third. Then we can just drop drop that down like that, just so we know. And then maybe we can just do a nice little script cafe. Like that. And again, we'll do that real loosely and fun when we do our painting, just so we have it there. And we do have a vertical here, so let's put in this vertical over here. This is the edge of the wall. There's another um, commercial uh, space next to this one, so maybe there's a restaurant next door or a bakery or something like that. So we'll just get a couple lines here that um, describe this area here of a uh, cafe in the middle of a street. Like in the middle of the block, we have this one cafe sitting in between other businesses and so forth. So we just have that in there. Does that make sense? So we kind of have our our picture here, and we're just kind of using this and saying, you know, we see there is another uh, business over here. Maybe, like I said, it could be a restaurant or a bakery or something like that. And then the same thing over here. There's another commercial uh, space over here on the right, but we're just focused in on our cafe and then we wanted to get in the um, the curved the 
nice curved lines like that for the bottom of this canopy. That looks fine. I think in this picture it's a little larger, a little wider, but I think I think we're okay. That looks all right. And if you have a problem, you say, let's say you do draw this in and then you think it's not large enough, you can just lightly erase. Leave some of the lines that you had here so that you can kind of see where you have to go a little further. And I'll just go a little further on that and then I'll just sort of do the same thing. And I just do that curved line up and down across better. And uh, I notice the doorway is right at the top of this. So we'll carry our door line right up here. So before we started, I did have this line in here where the doorway started here and here. And it was about a third of the way. So if you can see this here, our line's up here. This was the thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds. So the center of the door basically is uh, a third of the way over. So I'm just kind of using that as a, a guide that my door is centered on the third line going this way, one third across from the left. So from the left over one third of the way across the painting, that's the center of the door. And then I just carry those lines up like that. That looks good. Then the door here is like so. Just a little bit of the door is just a tiny bit showing here like so. We can leave that just very loose, just the draw, just the uh, shape of that door here going in. <clears throat> and then right next to that, we have some trim that goes down about a third of the way up from the bottom is the bottom of the window. So you can see I'm always kind of trying to use thirds, halves. Here is, uh, so between, between here, the bottom of the door and the canopy, a third of the way up is the bottom window. So we just make a note there and say, okay, now let's go across. Now this window is pretty wide. Maybe I don't have it perfect when I drew this everything I might be a little bit off and you can not have to worry if it's perfect it's just you know it's our you know does that make sense this is our painting this is your painting you're the artist you can have things you know a little bit off here and there it doesn't have to be perfect and then here we have the the window has a a sash across there so we'll put that there And then we're going to start working in our figures over here probably. So we're not going to get too fussy with things. But I think this looks pretty good. So I think we're really... Things are coming together. Let's take a little break now. We've done a lot of dra drawing so far. So I always say, you know, when you're drawing, you know, try to take a few breaks between... Um, the time you start and the time you're finishing up your drawing. So maybe you can do your drawing in two two goes. So maybe your first go, you're getting in maybe your hash marks and starting things a little bit, getting some lines in there. Maybe your second go on your pencil sketching and drawing, you're kind of laying things out, getting your main subject matter in there, and then maybe even a break, and then a third go with your drawing to finish up anything you might need to, to prep for your painting. And then you start thinking about your painting a little more as you're finishing up your last third go on your drawing. And I think that's good. Or you might do it in two goes, your drawing, pencil drawing, but it's up to you. Um, and I always say, too, I hope you'll uh, join along with us uh, every week. Uh, if you, if you um, feel free to subscribe, the subscribe button's right down there on the right-hand side. So if you subscribe, you'll have these interesting videos every week. You'll be alerted when they come out. You can watch them full through. You'll learn a lot of interesting new information as you go. And then you can join along with this too and take your time going through the video, maybe a second time where you can stop and go and pause your video as you go and work through the uh, painting that you 
that you like you know that you'd like to do because not everyone's going to want to paint this cafe scene some of you like flowers and boats and you're not really interested in a cafe scene so i understand that totally so don't worry but if you do watch uh, each episode full through you're going to learn a lot of stuff about all the fundamentals that we do here in watercolor and drawing painting laying out your uh, artwork different design principles all these different things you're going to learn and the more you hear them the more they're just going to stick with you and click with you and then you'll you'll be using them in your artwork and your artwork will be getting better and that's the main thing i want to see your paintings getting better and better and i know they will you can do this let's come back we'll finish up our drawing and then we'll start our painting um, so we'll be back in just a second. Okay, we're moving right along here. We're just starting back up. We took a break. We did most of our uh, drawing here, our pencil drawing. So we have pretty much everything um, hashed out with our hash marks and we kind of just went over, you know, how we got our parallel lines here across our horizontal lines. Um, we have uh, quite a number of those, and it looks very pleasing when you kind of have a dominant line going through your painting. So that dominant line is a horizontal line going across, and you have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the bottom, if we can consider that too, ten, and maybe the top to eleven. So about a dozen lines here all running horizontal. That looks really pleasing. Has kind of a... a relaxing type feel for the painting. Uh, horizontal lines are more of a relaxing type uh, mark on the paper. So we will uh, continue on here. So uh, we did say we wanted to add some figures and we'll do some tables and I think once we get these tables and figures in and maybe we'll just add some of the um, uh, tr tree uh, bushes here in these planters, some of these plant plantings here, we should be pretty good. So uh, let's start out here. Maybe we'll go with um, maybe we'll go with one table, and then we can use this as our guide to where we want to have our tables. Let's just say we're going to make one round table. Maybe we'll make it a little larger. So we'll make a larger round table here, and then we'll have uh, some two seated figures. And I think we'll maybe leave out the stools here. We'll just have the two figures and then the little bench seat behind here. So let's take a look and we can kind of gauge this. So the top of the tables, the top of the tables here are halfway between the um, first step here and the top and the bottom of the window. So from here to here. From this point here, the tables are about halfway. So that's about halfway between. So let's make a table. The table width is pretty, not too wide. It's an oval table. So maybe we'll do the oval table like so. And then we're going to take a look and say, okay, we're, how far do the legs from the bottom of the table? So we did an oval here, a pretty thin oval. Then we take our legs and we say how far do those go down. So we take those legs down about halfway between the bottom of this step and the picture frame, our, our frame of our picture here, approximately. Maybe it's going to be a little less, but let's go with that first and see how that looks. So halfway up, between here and here, between this and this point, the bottom of the picture frame, and the bottom of this step here, is the bottom of the table, the legs of the table, and that looks pretty good. Let's try that. And then we'll just kind of make these like so. They're kind of smooth curves like that. That looks pretty good. And then maybe another one here. Just so we have them there, we're going to do a lot of painting. And always remember when you're painting, you can add a lot of detail and kind of sculpt your your picture and your painting as you go so you don't have to work everything out on your your drawing does that make sense so a lot of times once you get in there and you start painting you're going to notice that you'll be able to paint in some things you can paint over some things you might not like if you have a few pencil lines and you're thinking i want to kind of paint over those i don't think i need as many lines in something that's fine so you can kind of you know work that out as you paint but we will go with pretty much the legs of the table like this and we'll just 
we'll put them in. And make a couple little, maybe some horizontal lines here too. Then we're going to have um, a bench seat behind here. Maybe we'll just make the figures actually. So let's not get too, I'm not going to get too worried about things here. I'm just going to sort of make a, a line where I think the seat of the figures is going to be. And then we can just kind of put in some lines in here for the chairs. We don't have to get involved in drawing in the chairs. I don't think that's really good to do that because there's a lot of lines already with our table. Does that make sense? If you have a lot of lines already with your table doing the legs of your uh, cafe table here, it would kind of make sense to keep just some minimal lines behind this where you think the chairs are just so you have a feel for where you're going to have your figures sitting. But you're not going to want to keep drawing in, uh, you know, excessive uh, pencil lines into this section over here because we're going to make this, you know, a loose painting and we're not going to get too carried away with too many pencil lines. So I just wanted to get in where the bottom of the chairs are going to be approximately there. And then here we're going to just, um, we're going to put our figures here. So I'm going to have one figure here, like so. And I'm just going to do a very loose, some very loose figures here. They're having some I'm just making shoulders, head, head and shoulders, very loose. And uh, I don't think we have to get more detail than that. Just some shoulders and, and a head here, and then a head here and shoulders. And uh, we have some, maybe our, our figures are having some coffee so maybe some we'll have our arms down here on the table some cups maybe just a few cups indications again we're going to do this very loose this painting we're not going to get too involved with the immense details so we just have maybe two two arms with two coffee cups there like so and they're just having a nice time a wonderful time having a, a coffee here and um, chatting and enjoying the day and you know, we might put in a, maybe we'll put in a chair, like so. And then over here too, we'll have a chair there. Just the, the back of the chair maybe. Just a little line there. And the rest we don't have to worry about. So if we get a few lines, a chair, the backs of the chair here and over here, and our figures in, that looks fine. We'll see how it turns out. I think you'll find that Less is more. Less is more here. You don't want to go with a lot of details. Keep it very loose. You'll paint in most of your ideas as you paint with your paint. So that's good. So I think we have everything here we need. We'll t let's put, the, put in these uh, trees here. There's some gorgeous pine, uh, looks like pine trees here, small pine trees, and they're kind of... We'll just put in some indications of some branches like so and then the same thing over here we're going to have some more pine trees over here maybe this one is a little bit higher up and uh, we'll keep those very loose too as well we're just going to get a few little small indications of some branches just so we know when we're going in to paint this we can splash and create our trees and know that we have to get in a few uh, branches. Does that make sense? So when, when you kind of lightly sketch in some lines you're doing it to just remind yourself as you're painting what you're what you're going to be actually doing. So it's kind of like a map. Your pencil drawing is a map of once you start painting what you're going to be doing there and then you don't have to do too much thinking beyond that because you already know you worked it out before you started your painting. Does that make sense? That's a great tip. That's a little tidbit. That's a, a tidbit of information that I think is absolutely great and you'll if you use that you will absolutely 
benefit from it. If you can get in some penciled in ideas on your painting before as many as you can but without overdoing it. Obviously we don't want to draw in every pencil line that we see when we're doing a drawing but if you if you pretty much get in the most of the ideas with your even light super light pencil lines that's one less thing you have to worry about when you're painting. Then when you're painting you can concentrate on mixing your colors, your washes, watching all your paint dry as it goes and then adding in subsequent washes after that but the main thing is you already have most of the ideas that you need already you know between the hash marks and your drawing you have everything you need once you start painting you won't need to really do any more sketching or do much more thinking on things you'll just be more or less painting in your your scene and then you know kind of being reserved and not overworking it and you leave it under finished and then you can always go back in a day later and add in a few more details but you'll see we're gonna start painting in just a second um, We'll take another break since we did a lot of pencil drawing here and we'll come right back in just a few seconds and we'll start painting. Hey, welcome back everybody. Thanks so much for coming by again and we're just getting back started again. We're going to start our painting in just a second or two. And uh, again, I just want to say I appreciate everybody coming by. The great comments in the comments section, all the encouragement, it keeps me stoked, keeps me uh, excited about painting here on YouTube and I really appreciate it. And uh, we're just going to get, let's get started now. Um, we did our pencil drawing and again we kind of talked about how you want to have mostly everything you need in your pencil drawing um, to help you guide your painting as you go, but you don't want too many uh, lines in there. Um, and you don't want to perhaps be erasing a lot and kind of take your time you get in your hash marks to kind of get the overall where your subject matter is kind of um, falling within your your boundaries of your painting your frame the frame of your uh, painting your uh, rectangle your square we're working in a seven by seven format here and um, that's really all so I'm glad you're joining back and starting up again after our break and we'll uh, get painting here so I poured some fresh water into my uh, I'm fresh water clean water into my water pail so I use a large collapsible water container pour some fresh water in there um, I'm gonna take this put this across for me and then I'm gonna um, have my palette nice fresh fresh moist juicy paint here um, I always say this on my channel if you're new here and you haven't been following me too long or you're just for the first time you're coming here um, I always say please subscribe you'll get lots of great videos every week we're creating new videos all different kinds of subject matter seascapes landscapes cityscapes cafes flowers figures you name it we do everything here watercolor so you'll be getting a great uh, base of knowledge here on painting watercolors and drawing and all the techniques and methods that go into that uh, so that's great you'll be learning every time you watch a new video and then you're picking up and painting and drawing the ones you like most uh, as you go maybe you like everyone or you just want to practice every one that we do and that's great too that's phenomenal um, so as we go here um, I always mention you want to have fresh moist juicy paint and if you haven't thought about that too much if you're just starting out or if maybe you've only been painting a short amount of time or even if you're an old pro and you're maybe used to doing it your way I say please check out my palette videos all you have to do is just simply type in my name into the YouTube search bar Chris C-H-R-A-S space P-E-T-R-I Petri my last name and then you type in palette P-A-L-E T T E. So if you type in Chris Petri palette into YouTube, you'll see I have about 10 videos on palettes and paints, all kinds of information of how I use my palette, what colors I use, how to keep my palette fresh. I always have all kinds of techniques of how to keep your palette with fresh moist paint where you don't have to keep squeezing in paint every day when you go to paint. You can have this always readily accessible, your, your fresh paints anytime you want to paint you can have it always just like this fresh and moist juicy paint as as you uh, go so you have to check out those palette videos videos I made um, please do check those out if you haven't already I'm sure many of you have 
So great, let's get started now. We're going to get in here. We're going to do the a la prima method. Now you'll always hear me say, usually we're going to practice or, or we, we're going to paint our paintings in either two methods, a la prima or glazing technique. Glazing technique simply is light, really light, super light washes, like let's say you're using a cerulean blue or a French ultramarine blue and some burnt umber, some burnt sienna. So uh, glazing technique is you're going to use a super light wash and cover the whole painting and let it dry and then come back in and do your dark colors. So where you're going to be using straight dark colors like that over the top of your lighter wash once that dries. That's the glazing technique. We do that here. You'll see many videos I do in the glazing technique style. But this one here we're going to do the a la prima style of painting which is more my style. I use a la prima more than I do glazing technique. And that simply is you're, you're going to be going in first with your dark. So you're using mostly straight paint in the beginning. Straight paint, you're taking your brush, rinsing it off, drying it off on a paper towel or a small speed, uh, piece of sponge here like so. Or your apron if you wear an apron or some uh, tissue, whatever it is you want to rinse your brush off, dry, uh, take a little bit of water off first on, and then you go in into your paints and you get your straight paint. And that's how you get your darks to start out with as you go. So here, let's put that right to use. The windows here, we can kind of see the windows were very dark. And I'm making that canopy like that. Lots of interesting darks. We're going to use some We'll mix in some uh, yellow ochre with our darks. So essentially, we're going in with some darks. Straight to paint almost, just a little bit of damp brush with your straight paints. You could use a square brush or a flat brush if you want to, to get more of a straighter lines if you want, but we can get some pretty good lines here with our round brush. And warm and cool everywhere, some blue, cerulean blue there too. We want to mix warm and cool everywhere, so we don't want to get stuck with just warm or cool colors. We so we add in our warm and cools everywhere. And our windows in our photograph we're working from, the windows are very dark. And there might be some, a little bit of lights in the, in the window. There's maybe some tables in there, inside the cafe, a bar, maybe a countertop, whatever. So we leave a few. And a couple. I use a um, tissue just to blot up a little bit of paint, maybe add a little interest to that. Perfect, look at that. Then, again, let's go in. More darks. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. Let's add a little bit of Prussian blue in that too. And we'll just do a few more darks and then let's do this too over here. And we want to do some more yellow ochre just to get some warm and cool like that. And here, I'm not getting too fussy. Let's just make these some really good rich darks. And again, I rinse my brush, take a little bit of water off, some more paint. And it gets a little lighter here towards the bottom, this section here. And then it is, it's quite a bit lighter. We're starting to see more light from the outdoors shining into this cafe on the interior of the cafe. So that's why we're going to go lighter now. Like that. And then we're going to do a quick, uh, some darks here on the door. There's a door here. 
this is the uh, maybe the glass on the door. So the door is opening up into the cafe, like so. And it stops about three quarters of the way. Maybe a little bit of cadmium red. Two, let's add some exciting colors. Let's add some reds into this too. So pretty much we have all the interesting colors we want. And again, the Alla Prima method, we're doing all the darks first. Uh, do you see that? We're actually creating all the darks first as we go here. Um, in the photograph there are some darks over here on the left. I'm not going to put those in so much. I think I'm going to leave it more simple. Most of the interesting things we're going to paint are going to be right here. The figures at the table, the window, the door, the cafe, the trees are kind of, our trees are going to kind of be like the, the bookends to the painting. So we'll have some interesting trees and branches and things over here on both sides. And other than that, I think we'll, we'll keep it a simple painting. So let's keep going here. We're getting in the darks. And um, maybe let's uh, go up and we'll do some of, the, some of the canopy. So we'll go with some darks. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, a little bit of Prussian blue, burnt sienna. And then we're just going to go across and we're going to do our lines across. Let's do some dashed lines. Let's not keep it 100% solid all the way. Let's sort of be very careful as you go across. Then maybe you can blot up a couple spots. Then maybe use a little bit of the lighter color. Make a little bit of a lighter wash. Like that. Then maybe back into some darker wash. Let's modulate our tonal values. We don't want to go with just all one straight tone and value for that. We want to break it up a little bit. Add a little bit of warmth into that too. Maybe a little bit of red. Add some red into that dark mixture. Maybe some gold, some uh, yellow ochre, maybe some blue, maybe some cerulean blue too. Add some interesting colors there. And then we're going to make our second line across here. And again, we go with some darks. Rinse off our brush, dry off the water a little bit. Get a little bit of a lighter wash there. Blue. Nice light color. A little bit of gold. Again, try to be mixing your colors and getting some different looks. It might not be exactly what we're seeing in the picture, but we'd rather have it more exciting than kind of just saying, slavishly saying, oh, we're just going to paint what we see. No, we're going we're gonna to paint it more exciting. We want it to look more exciting than it looks in the photograph. And so that's why we're doing this. We're adding some more colors to what we are placing on the paper. And uh, do you see that, how we're doing that? If we just look at the photograph, you kind of see that it's just a black or a dark, you know, it's like it's a black color. It's a very dark, like a black canopy trim that goes across. So instead we're adding some variation to it, some colors, really making it look interesting so that when someone looks at that area of the painting, they're going, ooh, look at that, different colors. And then they start looking at that, and then that line becomes an interesting part of your painting. Whereas if we just paint one color straight across, there's not really much that a person might look at the painting and just think, oh, it's, just, oh, it's a black line, you know, or whatever. So always remember that. You're the artist. You want to create more exciting in your painting whenever you can. And I'm doing the same thing here. Let's make things more exciting. So um, let's do some shadowing, maybe. Um, we're using yellow ochre and cerulean blue. We're going to do some shadowing under the canopy over here. 
So I'm going to go really slow and keep that shadow color going across like so. Then I get a little darker at the very top like that. Maybe not everywhere here and there. Modulation. There we go. A little bit of blue. And then we're going to go with a darker <clears throat> shadow under here to kind of bring out that nice curvy line. If you, if you have a hard time with that curvy line on the uh, awning, you can always make it a straight awning. You don't have to make it a curvy line like this. So here, yellow ochre, cerulean blue, we're going to make a little bit of a shadow, warm shadow, cool, warm and cool shadows, a mix of the two. And then soften them out. And since this is a light shadow wash here, you can just have fun with it. You don't have to worry about it too much if it's going around in different areas of your painting, down, lower, into the painting, whatever. That's okay. It's a very light wash. Once it dries, you'll barely see it. But it is something that uh, a little bit of orange here. We want to add a little bit of orange. A couple, a couple spots of orange, just a little bit added warmth. A little bit of splashing. Let's start to bring in some texture. Texture is good, important. I'll put a couple of splashes up top. There's a bit of a shadow over here. We could call that a mystery shadow. It sort of goes across this way. A little bit of orange on the awning too. Blot up a little bit if you think you've gone too dark or something, but a little bit of uh, orangey uh, yellow ochre and orange on this awning looks good with a little bit of the cerulean blue as well and it kind of just makes a good a good uh, texture to it and a good like we're seeing a little bit of the play of light and shadow warmth warm shadows cool shadows on the awning up above we can add a little bit of darks here and there, uh, you know, a little bit of that cerulean blue underneath with a little bit of the other warmer tones, like that, and then kind of soften them a little bit just to give us a little more detail on that canopy. Same thing here. There's a little more shadow inside here on this door. So let's add that in. That door is in very, very, has a lot of shadow there. So we could just add to that. There we go. And I lift up a little bit of paint there. And since this is already wet and we've just did some washes on here, let's let that dry. So we've worked a little bit already here and we've gone 
a good deal with our darks here. So we kind of did quite a few darks and cools and warms and cools. Um, we could add in maybe this dark um, French ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, burnt umber, and we're just going to put that. We'll put that in there. And we soften that. Okay, now we're going to take some more of this dark, mix in a little bit of yellow ochre with some of this dark. See, what, all right, we have a nice warm grayish color. Let's do our our. It looks like a little sidewalk on top of the. It's a bit of a sidewalk here. A little step area, and then we'll put that over here. Same thing. Maybe we just run run a couple dashes through there, maybe just a little bit, kind of ties it together. But we're going to do the uh, figures in a few minutes or so. But we're going to take a break now. We've we've done a lot of work here so far. I, I think we're really making a lot of progress. I think once we get the figures in and the table and a couple washes on the foreground here, I think we'll be pretty much finished. So you can kind of see this is a painting where once you're getting in most of your darks you're really going to be like three quarters of the way finished and then at the end of the painting you're just going to maybe do some details um, but we'll do, we'll do those very sparingly so you'll kind of see that that's the key with watercolors when we're doing this type of method a la prima painting you're getting your darks in first and then as you go you take your time you take a break or two here and there and then you just keep adding in more of the subject matter until you're kind of once you're toward the end of the painting, you have most of your subject matter in, then you can kind of just hold back and kind of look and say, you know what, it might be good there. And then you can come back a day or two later and add in a few more, uh, you know, details if you want. But if you do a little bit less, you'll tend to be happier, I think, with your painting. So we'll see. But you'll kind of, uh, we'll work along here and we'll, we'll see how it looks. But I think once we get our figures in and these uh, uh, shrubs and trees next to the um, cafe here on the sides, and then we get our cafe sign in up here, I think we'll be pretty much good to go. All right, so we'll be right back. And again, I thank you so much for following along here. We're having lots of fun. Let's keep going with this. Um, this is a really doable painting. You can do this. Uh, some darks for the door, the window, and you're pretty much a couple lines up on top here, the horizontal lines of the trim. And then we'll do our figures next, and you'll see how easy the figures are. We're going to do them very simply, very uh, easily, not much to them. As far as, uh, you know, we're not going to get into a lot of details with our figures here. We're just going to have a fun time and get them in quick, and they'll look great, too. You'll see. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, we're just coming back from a break. We're getting started again. Uh, let's uh, just take a, a quick moment here just to look at, look at what we're doing. I'm seeing that... I have uh, a few things left to do. The figures here, the table, uh, a little bit of shadowing on the ground here. These two, three, three wood uh, wood pots with plants and some shrubs and some trees here. Um, the cafe sign. We'll put in a nice script here, cafe, and uh, maybe a couple of shadows or some color variation, maybe on the upper section here. Other than that, I think we're we're pretty much finished, so let, let's uh, let's get going here. I got some fresh water while we were taking our break, and um, I'm just going to have to get one thing over here. And I'm getting my trusty apron, and 
I'm ready to go here and uh, we'll get started here. So um, I think we'll go for the table first. Let's do that. So I'll take some burnt umber, yellow ochre, cerulean blue. And I'll just have a tissue to dry off some of the paint. So I'm just going to start to uh, maybe a little bit of French ultramarine blue there just for some shadowing up here. darker back in there. We're going to have some shadows under the table and uh, let's see here some blue, burnt umber. I'm going to keep the color scheme really simple here in this painting. I'm not going to go too too far out from what we started with. I might get a little more colors so I'm going to do cadmium red for the shirt here so I'm going with a pretty exciting looking shirt here And some flesh tones, um, cadmium red, yellow ochre. And I rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of water, go into some cerulean blue for some shadow. And again, I'm just going to keep this real simple for the uh, flesh tones and some uh, burnt umber and French ultramarine blue for the hair maybe. This person has some darker hair. And then this person here maybe has a little bit of lighter hair. So we'll do some flesh tones first for the complexion. Maybe we'll do a, uh, maybe a gold. Um, hmm. Let's see here. Let's go with a cobalt blue. Then we'll work in some darker shadows under here. And that's when I kind of just let things mix and mingle under here. So we're not trying to create too much detail. Some darks here and there underneath, the shadowing there.
then there might be some more shadowing under here like this. Underneath the table. And then underneath our figures here. A little bit of warmth in the shadows, so we'll pick up some of that yellow ochre just to get some warmth in there. Maybe some of the red too, a little bit of red in there. And again, not a lot of um, details for the underside of the table. That didn't come out great. Maybe that's a tablecloth, so maybe we can blot up a little bit there. Again, if you ever get um, if you ever have an issue where you feel something is not looking good or whatever, you can always blot up some paint and then start over, like in a sense, like I'm doing here. It could, been a, it could be a really like something that ruins the painting. I don't think it will ruin the painting at this point, but it could. But I'm thinking this might be more of a um, tablecloth, a light colored tablecloth there. So I'm trying to rescue this area that I just went in aggressively and started to change things around. And um, but I think it's going to be all right. And I'll put a little bit of red in there too, so that it seems like it's see-through. And then I'll add the darker burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of cerulean blue. And I'll try to just capture that, that line of the, like that. That might work. And then we're going to let this dry now. So I kind of run out of options in a sense. I have to let this dry now. To do any more work to it but I I think I did the right thing by kind of rescuing that a little bit didn't look good all dark under there everywhere too many darks in there made it look a little bit uh, made it look a little bit unpleasant so now we'll go with some Some hair here. And a little bit of and we'll put a little nose here. And again, blotting up doesn't hurt. You can go back in once it's dry, so that's what we'll do. Sometimes that's a good effect when you kind of go in, paint it, and then dry it off a little bit with the um, tissue. And then it gives like a softness to it, and then you can go in and do a couple hard um, touch-ups to it, and, and uh, it looks good. So we'll let this dry now 100%. Um, I think we could do a little bit of details here. I think we can do... 
just a couple of eyes there and that should be fine and uh, we'll do some couple hands here just to they're having their uh, coffees and at the cafe and Okay, so our figures are good. We're letting this dry here. We're going to forget about that for right now. We'll go right in over here. We'll do our boxes. Does this make sense? Um, working, ar I'm working around the painting, so I kind of did everything I could over here in the um, figures, in the table. So now I'm going to start going in with my, my wood planters. So we have some wood planters here. So I'll get some uh, color going there. A little bit of sap green and cadmium lemon yellow. Splashes there. Okay. Now we will do a little shadowing over here, we'll make some darks. That's too wet to add shadows right now, so we'll just let that dry there. Uh, let's do our cafe sign. So I'm going to try to move around the painting. Um, this is, can you see that? I'm moving around the painting, trying to complete areas as I go. Let this we'll let these dry now. The two plants here, uh, the um, the um, planter boxes, the wood planter boxes, and the bush over here. And we'll do the trees next. Let's do the cafe. Let's do the cafe sign. There we go. And we'll just make it a little more interesting, maybe. Add a little variation to it. good and what else this is probably getting pretty good and dry but I'll, we'll let this go till till probably last before we're finished what right when we're finishing up I think we're gonna do that area there so I'm gonna make some a chair back here maybe that's too dark And that's the other side of that chair there. And okay, so the shadows are definitely darker under here. So now I'm going back in again, knowing it could be disastrous. Once a section starts giving me problems here, I find that it continues to happen, but uh, I'm just going to keep going. And Try 
try to leave some lights in there somehow. That might um, I might be able to keep working on this. I think we can go in with some more darks here. And then maybe we can use some blue over here like that. Okay. We can also use... We'll use some white, white paint maybe to do a couple touch-ups, you know, highlights and touch-ups to the table, I think. So we can work on that a little more later. Let's get back over here. We'll do some shadowing under there, like so. Let's use some red here. Mix in some colors. Some green, red. And we've already been working about 15, 20 minutes. Um, I am going to keep going here. I think we can keep going. Maybe we'll do some shadowing under there. A little bit of shadowing under the window. Just a little bit of okay. Now we will get some greens, um, cadmium lemon yellow, lots of cadmium lemon yellow. more water. There we go. And just a couple of very bright green leaves here. Nothing too heavy. Let's keep it nice and light and not too much. The main thing is to get the consistency of the cadmium lemon yellow. And we will put in some uh, fine uh, branches and so forth once we uh, and a little darker green at the bottoms here, lighter green, greenish yellow up top. I think I will erase this mystery shadow here. I don't think I'm going to do that, so I'll just erase that shadow line we had there. I'll just leave this uh, as it is. And I'll take a little of that cadmium lemon yellow and just add it to the ground a little bit in the walls. Up here a little bit too. Just a touch of it. Makes it feel like sunny and warm. The wall up here, the canopy, 
just a touch of that lemon yellow, cadmium lemon yellow. Looks good. Maybe a little bit of cadmium orange. That always also adds that nice warmth. And there's a little bit of that cool color on this area here of the step. So there's a, t a step up here onto that sidewalk. That's a little cooler. Seems to be a little bit of a shadow there. Kind of nice to have that too. To have that shadow there because it sort of like that and then once that dries we can do a little more to that so we're really finishing up now um, I'm gonna take one more break just to let some things dry um, and I think that'll be pretty good as we go um, Okay, let's let this dry, just a few minutes. I might put that little bit of shadow over here. There's another wall over here. If we add that wall in like so, and add a little bit of warmth to it too as well, like that. That'll kind of make an interesting uh, an interesting break for the eyes to go over to a different area. And I'll try to get a little bit of that awning. couple of darks for the leaves. Okay, we'll come right back and finish up. All right, we're coming back to do the final details here. We had some uh, struggles through this painting. Every painting usually will um, have some issues when you're working through uh, the painting. Um, sometimes uh, if I haven't painted a subject, ma subject matter a lot, I sometimes get into a little bit of trouble. So here I had some issues with some shadows under this table um, and you know I tried to work around it but I, I think I found a good resolution to that by adding a tablecloth on top of there because I had too many dark shadows can you see that I had too many dark shadows under the table basically so I eliminated you know tried to eliminate that by blotting out while the paint was still wet the dark paint and lifted that paint out and then I had a little more of a white tablecloth look to it which I think looks okay uh, now to take a little bit of um, this is like the focal point of the painting pretty much we have some figures sitting down having coffee at this cafe um, if I can actually add some more uh, interest to this canopy I think I'm going to change this to like either red or green so maybe we'll do that we'll maybe add, we'll make this either like a, a, a viridian green or maybe like a nice red like this like a cadmium red canopy like that I think that would look good it'll kind of add some more excitement to the painting and take some pressure off of the figure sitting here at the table because that's you know um, 
uh, that right now is sort of like the you know really the main focal point in our attention goes right there to the figures if maybe maybe we'll even do a striped canopy up here maybe that'll work so let's try it I think I'm gonna go with maybe a red striped canopy try that out and see how it looks so um, well let's do that let's make some stripes here so I'll just go like this nothing too fancy and then I'll just sort of make them kind of on an angle as they go this way, like that. And I'll try to just evenly space them like this, and then they're going to start to angle out like that. Like that. Perfect. And uh, that should be good. So let's try to paint the stripes in. We'll use red. So we'll get some cadmium red, maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson too, just to get a little bit of a um, change, and, and a little bit of cerulean blue too, just to give it a little change in value. I'll rinse my brush off again, dry it off on the tissue a little bit, and we'll go in and we'll start. So this is more fun kind of just getting in some stripes here. Main thing is being concentrating really well so that we don't paint in the wrong area and ruin the stripe effect. So maybe we can just do this as we go. Put a little bit of paint in each one and then we kind of know So here you can grab some straight paint, here and there. Okay, now we're over by the trees over here. I'm trying to be very careful here. And I'm just taking my time. A sharp uh, point on the brush is really important here. We have some leaves over here, so we won't make this completely Then I'll just add some damp brush to this. That looks much better. And a little bit of then I rinse off the brush, dry off the brush quick, and just to get a little bit of different tonal value and variation. We have to do this really quick though, you can't. Um, you either have to let it dry 100% or add in your little bit of extra wash pretty fast right after you've painted it. Or it'll get pretty sp uh, spotty and cauliflowers and funny looking stuff like that. I think that looks good. Then I just drop on a couple splashes of water just to again give it, give it a little more 
variation, maybe a little bit of blotting. Like that. I think that looks good. Now I'm going to get some burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt sienna, and let's add a little bit of a little bit of a decorative uh, trim around this here. Again, that'll take a little pressure off the. So now I'm just trying to maybe add some distractions from my I want to just make the focal point all around the whole painting making diff you know different focal points not just one let's kind of get our needlepoint brush here we'll get some more of the burnt umber Maybe a little bit of yellow ochre, cerulean blue, burnt umber, a little bit of French ultramarine blue. And we'll do some, we'll dry off a little bit of the, and we'll do some, uh, let's get a little more. And we're just going to do some branches. And we've had fun here. Have we not had fun? <laughs> we've had a great time. We're struggling. Sometimes when we're doing our paintings, everyone struggles. We all, sometimes you run into an issue with your painting and then you just try to, um, you know, try to make some workarounds and fix-ups here and there. If it doesn't work, it's no problem. We'll just take this, flip it over and start a new painting. So never stress if your painting goes bad or goes wrong and it doesn't like, sometimes when um, a painting starts to have issues where you might have something that doesn't look great and then you try to repair it and it doesn't work that's fine you can just start a new one right away I've created this video here so I've like I wanted to just keep going and kind of show you how I would try to work through some problems on this because I did find that the shadows under the table weren't that great and the but I think it it, it looks okay um, but I think that's a big help we have with the changing the awning making that more exciting looking And uh, I think that does make it look better. And then uh, we'll maybe just have a little bit of highlights with our, so we have some titanium white in our tube. We take a little bit of yellow ochre and we make some cat, uh, titanium white and yellow ochre. And we'll just do a few highlights, maybe. We'll do a highlight on top of the head here. Maybe uh, on top of the shoulders here. Top of the shoulders. Like that. And um, we can add um, maybe a couple like this. So we'll have some. And we also need a little bit of highlights over here, maybe like that. That looks good. And um, we said we wanted to I'll just go back in. I'll just try to get some more uh, titanium right here, just for Like 
like that. There, one more there. I'm just trying to get a few highlights going. There we go. And uh, what else can we do here? Um, that's looking pretty good. I think we have the highlights we have to do. Maybe just a little bit of uh, of the chair over here. That's uh, burnt umber, yellow ochre, a little bit of cerulean blue. And we're just going to finish the chair over here. And we can add a little bit of darker shadows over here. So I'll try to make a little shadow for the arm here. Little bit of flesh tone here, yellow ochre and cadmium red. And we'll blend that in. And then we would let that dry if you want to add a little bit of um, maybe a little bit of eyes, like a little bit of a dark um, touch for the eyes here. Maybe we'll let that dry for a few minutes and we can just finish up and do a little bit of eyes and uh, maybe our sunglasses on our figure here. Um, other than that, I think it looks pretty good. A little bit of shadowing under here. And you can always do these scenes without figures. That's very, um, you could do this scene with no figures. I added the figures in here at the table. You could do figures walking in this scene, possibly a few figures, larger ones in the foreground here, walking towards the cafe or um, a few figures maybe standing or one figure maybe walking inside the door or inside that you could put a figure in the interior of this cafe maybe. Um, so that's up to you, you can add different uh, ideas. And again, if you run into a problem, don't uh, sweat it too much. Try to come up with some creative solutions to um, uh, work around something that might not go 100% right for you when you're doing your paintings. I hope um, you'll uh, have a good takeaway from this that if you do have an issue or two on a painting, you try to, again, work around it, do some creative ideas, step back, think of maybe something in the past you did in a painting and you corrected something a certain way. And then again, if it doesn't go right and it keeps, you know, just snowballing and not going well, not a problem. Just don't worry about it. Turn the paper over and start a new painting or start a drawing or just take a break for, you know, a couple hours and maybe go back and just do some pencil sketching or whatever else. And, you know, so don't let it get to you if you have any issues with your paintings and they don't go right. And I'm always trying new ideas to try to, you know, repair things if something doesn't go good. And, uh, but this one, in the end here, I think it comes out okay. It turns out pretty good. Um, we'll just uh, peel off the tape here and we'll also put this at the beginning of the video. So right at the beginning of the video, you'll see this finished painting. I'll probably do a little touch up or two in between that time that I put it back onto the uh, beginning of the painting. So you'll see the finishing touches. I'll do a few more things to it once it dries 100%. So it might look a little bit different, but for the most part, we're, we're finished on this one. And I hope you enjoyed this. And hey, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. The button down below on the right-hand side, if you subscribe, we're doing paintings just like this. Cafe scenes, cityscapes, figure painting, flowers, boat scenes. We do uh, pretty much everything, still life. Uh, so let's have fun together. 
hit the subscribe button. Keep coming back. Put, put your comments below if you have questions. Um, and, uh, you know, this way we can uh, work all together on things. And thank you so much for coming by each week and painting along with me. And we'll see you on the next video.